Droners, welcome to this edition of Droner News. And we have some really interesting stuff like drones causing power outages, Parrot doing a huge drone sale, and DJI drones not doing so well at rally races. Let's check it out. Coming up first, like I said in the very beginning, um, there was a drone that caused a blackout in Silicon Valley. An incident occurred last week when a drone flew in Mountain View, California, which might sound familiar to you, you might not know why, but that's part of Silicon Valley. It flew into a power line sending 1,600 homes into darkness. Man, I, I really don't like reporting these kind of things because this is an idiot flying in an idiot way. That's just idiotic. Um, they, witnesses say it was some old guy in a white car that drove off. They haven't found him. Um, part of the reason that maybe they haven't found him is because maybe he didn't have to have his hobbyist drone registered because of that new law that we talked about recently that says that drones don't have to be registered. Or new ruling, I should say, not new law. But either way, police haven't found him yet. And the interesting thing for me about this story is actually that it, Mountain View, the reason why you might have heard of Mountain View, California is because that's actually the founding place of Google. Um, so maybe this can be like a back way of actually inspiring Google to throw its weight behind getting drones registered or doing something with drones or something. I don't know. Either way, interesting stuff. I hope that none of you have done that. And if you did, I don't like you. Coming in at number two, Carnegie Mellon Lab is developing some interesting drone solutions. I found this really interesting because um, pretty much students at the Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh are working on a doc some really exciting projects. In particular, Ellen A. Capo, Capo Capo, I'm sorry, Ellen. Um, she's a doctoral student in the robust, robust adaptive systems lab, is working on a software that pilots several drones at a time. And this might sound familiar to you because that's exactly what Intel does with the Super Bowl Intel drones or the ones working with the Sympathy Orchestra, Symphony Orchestra or even with Disney. Um, but Dr. Capo, or doctoral student Capo, wants to take it a step further and actually make it so these drones not only are not going to run into each other, but they also interact with people. So for example, if you're a dancer and you're dancing, the drone will actually do an interpretive dance with you that's not necessarily planned. It'll be able to react to what you're doing and be able to move with you. Um, and this for me actually reminds me of something that's going on right now at Cirque du Soleil on Broadway. The Broadway show actually uses eight drones right now as part of their show. So I don't know, this could be really, really cool. This is just taking a technology a step further, technology building on technology, which I love because that's really what drones is all about. Coming up next, we have drones in rally, rally car racing. Uh, DJI actually made a deal with FIA, World Rally Championship. So rally cars, you know, the ones that drive through the dirt and stuff. And like, you know, they're really cool. These cars are really fast. They go, like, I feel like this, this actually might even make it a drone fails. I don't know. Um, but DJI sent some camera crews up with the Phantom 4 Pro and Spire 2s to record the cars that go pretty fast, 125 miles an hour, which is 25 miles an hour faster than a drone. It's even legally allowed to go. So we know these drones ain't going that fast. Um, but as you can see, the, you know, previous years they used, all right, I'm just going to say it. As you can see in slow motion, this drone is not high enough over, like there's a hill and the drone, just, the pilot, whoever they are, they're not, they're not doing their thing. And they were miraculously able to save the drone, but the camera don't look so lucky. Uh, the car just runs right into it. And I mean, come on, bro. Like, why would you be flying so low under a hill on a race? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Um, but it's also really exciting partnership that DJI is doing because rally car racing typically uses helicopters which are more expensive and also can't get the same kind of angles that drones can just because of trees and all the other kind of stuff. A lot of reasons why they can't get any lower than they can. So this is actually really, really cool. It's actually adding a whole new element to it. And DJI even took it a step further and is doing mapping on the courses that's allowing them to study the way that the drivers are coming into the turns to see who's most effective while they're doing it in real time. So it's like, this is the best driver because of this, because normally they're racing against the time, not against each other directly. So it's actually a whole new statistical model that's being brought to it by drones so good job drones coming in number four Parrot is having a summer sale I've talked about it before that DJI is crushing all of their competition and also making a lot of them pivot and I talked about how Parrot was pivoting to commercial drones and they're doing that but apparently they're trying to get rid of their stock in the meantime and they're now selling their disco first-person view for $7.99 which used to be $12.99 their Bebop 2 for $4.99 which used to be $6.99 um, which is actually the exact same price as the Spark um, at least the basic spark. And all these drones are coming with the first, with the Parrot's first person view goggles and Sky Controller 2 at actually no extra charge, which is a pretty good deal, actually. I think it's a pretty good deal. See the link below. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to get a drone with goggles that if you want to do first person view flying and stuff like that, you don't want to build a drone, this might be a really good way to do that. Um, like I said, maybe they're trying to get rid of their stock. Like, I don't really know, but I know DJ is, DJ is killing them. So maybe they're just trying to recoup some money so they can move into the commercial or industrial field better. Who knows? All right, and coming in last but not least, welcome back, Drone Racing. Drone Racing 
season two is beginning. 2017 is the year. We're doing the second year. ESPN 1 and 2 are going to be airing it. It's not going to be live, but that's probably better for viewing because drone racing is so hard to film anyway that it'll be really hard to do a live feed. So I think they're doing the right thing with that. But either way, there's a lot more money in it this year. A lot more investors, a lot more people are paying attention because last year, 28.2 million people tuned in to the drone racing that happened. So the ESPN and the investors and companies are actually paying attention. And another cool thing is that the drones are going to be going faster this year. Last year, they topped out at about 80 miles an hour. This year, about 90. We got bigger tracks, you know, bigger everything. So it's going to actually start on June 20th, so stay tuned for that. And it continues until late July and with the London Championship race on July 28th on ESPN1. So check it out to the DroneRacingLeague.com for more details. Think of the Droners. Thank you for checking out this edition of Droner News. And if you want to see more editions of Droner News, bam, there it is. Or if you want to see the op dopest opening scene thing to a drone, whatever, just check this video out. It's really nice. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe because that is what allows us to do what we're doing. And as always, make sure you stay fly.